Welcome to Sister to Sister. You're in for a treat today. We're answering your questions with the help of our studio audience. Let's go. to sister. We are a group of Jesus girls and we tend to take your questions and problems and then answer from a biblical perspective. But today this is a very special day because guess what? You are writing to us and we're so grateful. So we have some viewer questions and our audience is going to help us by reading your emails that you sent to us. So keep those coming and here we go. So I need to find Elizabeth. Is it okay for little girls to wear itsy bitsy teeny weeny tiny little two piece bikinis? <laughs> okay, what do you have? No, I think I, I don't. I don't like it at all. I mean, is it a sin? No, but I don't like it. And you know what? I didn't let my girls wear them, and they have built in a sense of modesty. My girls don't like to have their belly showing. Right. They they really don't, and they're getting to that age where. You know, it's uh, they, they're still little, but they're, they they have a sense sing. of modesty. Well, I, I thought you two were I, gonna sing. I, I have to the say song. that I didn't let my I didn't permit my daughters. I had them wear wine pieces, but I did wear an itsy bitsy it's teeny, teeny weeny yellow, yellow polka dot bikini <laughs> that she wore. Uh, but I was a bean pole. <laughs> And my mother was a very ethnic woman that was oh, yeah. very strict, uh, so my belly button was covered, but I turned out okay. So I think if you train up a child, the Bible says train, mm -hmm. and show them modesty, that's fine, but I think you'll survive either way. That's right, but I know Amy has a different point of view, I which... Say absolutely, wear it while you can. It's a tie. I mean... Because they have these cutest little cover-ups and little bikinis for little, little. It, they're not trying to be sexy. They're cute. They're not yeah. like stringy, sexy bikini. They're just cute with flower, you know, big flowers, whatever. But they're not used to that kind yeah. of bathing yeah. suit. Yeah. That's the issue Is I it, have. It's a modesty thing. But we're talking about tots, we're not a teenager. Right. And because they wear a two-piece as a tot, they're going to be... I know. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. But here, I have a question. We have a pool, and I'm trying to decide how to make sure that our pool guests are wearing appropriate oh, that's you good. Need to uh, good dress. Because, no, I know, but I'm like, it's starting to have like birthday parties and friends right, over, and I'm right. like, I don't want these girls coming over with these string bikinis. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's right. Well, let us know. Yeah. The person that wrote the email about the bikinis, let us know what you think about our answers. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, where's Megan? Is it okay for me to date or marry an unbeliever? Um, quiet on the set. Oh, <laughs> I, whoa. Okay. I did. I did. I was a new Christian, and I didn't know the difference. Went to Bible study, told my Bible study, oh, I'm going out for the first time in college. And they're like, who, what? Is he saved? I said, no, does he have to be saved? So went on the first date, talked with my parents. They're Christians. We all decided, bring him to church. So I wouldn't date. I would say if a guy's interested or girl, take him to church. He See got how they feel. he got saved. Now they don't all do is it. Is that but who you married? Yeah, is that no. your husband? No. Oh. Oh. <laughs> He okay. got saved and went on. <laughs> well, Flo, I know you have an opinion on this one. Yeah, I, well, more than opinion, the word of God says not to be unequally yoked. Okay. You right. know? Yep. And, um, and just to throw a little thing in there, unequally yoked, yes, not just to the non-believer, but do you know that everybody saved is not your spouse? Just because you find somebody in church of the yeah, opposite that's right. That's <laughs> good. That's your spouse. You can still be unequally yoked. Um, so I, you know, I really think that we have to stay in line with the word. There's a reason why God give us, has given us those principles. And if you are going to marry or date someone, you have a free will. So, but just know that you're going to have, um, Issues. A rough road ahead right, of you, maybe. Right. And there's a lot of people that, especially grandmas, they bring their granddaughters or to church because they want them to meet the cute boy that they see in the row. And I like and do that. They do and they do, do that. Do that. My mother did that. Young ties. They're but young ties. You know, that's a good point, Kathy, because a lot of people do that. They're like, 
they'll have this wayward child that they want to marry the Christian child. Right, right. You know, on, come on, on, come on to church and meet this nice yeah. boy. Yeah. Can she get cleaned up first? Yeah. That's my son. Well, I have to tell you, in ethnic cultures, parents did select their spouses. And Which that's I right. Like it was that in my yeah, family. Oh, oh, can we go back to that? I don't think uncle. so. I don't oh, think so. Well, well I know, have another question. Tuned. We're talking about church. So this is the Jesus show. Lori, where are you? This is a very good question from one of our... When is it okay for me to leave my church, especially if I don't click with my pastor? <laughs> oh, I can't oh, believe oh, I got oh, one. I oh, thought this would be done. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm, well, I'm ready to Well, first of all, you're in. my pastor. Yeah. I'm all in. Yeah. yeah. All right, yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, to say, you know, first of all, how can everybody have that kind of time with the pastor to click with? Oh, I click with him. I don't click with him. Very good point. My question is, where did God call you to attend church and to be planted and to actually uh, be a pillar in God's house? And can you get behind that vision? Are you getting fed? Amen. That's it. If you're getting fed spiritually and God has called you there, who cares if you got a little clicky feeling going on? Amen. Is that right? I, I have yeah. witnessed in churches how there are certain types of personalities uh -huh. that have to be very close to the pastor. But the pastor can't be close to everybody. Mm -hmm. Jesus is your best friend. Amen. Jesus is your friend, your husband, right. your spouse, those right. close to you, your family. Right. So I think we have to clarify the teacher mm -hmm. versus the pre and the preacher versus the best and friend. And I of think the that's an issue that's between you and your spouse and God. And I think that it, a lot of times people think they see other people leaving a church and they're like, oh, you know, they're they're sinful. They're leaving the church, or oh, we all need to leave. Mm -hmm. I think that that that, that needs to be an individual mm -hmm. through prayer right. and seeking the counsel of the word. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. that is a very big decision. It should not mm -hmm. be taken lightly. Right. And I think people get offended. Mm -hmm. yeah. People get offended yeah. in mm -hmm. churches, and yeah. then they church hop. They don't like the music. They don't like one right. particular person that leads one of the ministries. Right. And I believe as the body of Christ, we need to come together. Yeah. The churches need to be unified, yeah. not pulled apart right. by offense. Right. I, I really I do. Say, read the Tell of Three Kings, and if you feel like you are not supposed to be somewhere, go ahead and find that place God wants you to be at, right. but don't take the tell and take a right. bunch of people with you. Oh, I like that. Oh. Plus, I like as that. As a pastor, I don't want my husband all gushy with a bunch of women, and he doesn't want me being all ooh with yeah. a bunch of men. That's like that's point. awkward. Yes. Yeah. yes. So it's like women that need to be close to the pastor. It ain't gonna Sorry. happen. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 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 Go find your husband <laughs> uh, and get close. Yeah. Find him in the row ahead of me. It's real yeah. point. Um, <laughs> hopefully he's repentant already. <laughs> Question we have now. Jamie will read. I was praying for a friend to be healed and they passed away. What do you say when someone says I didn't have enough faith? Why would I you would say that? go back to Satan? That yeah. is the worst comment that ever. Is. Why would you say that? Put, put somebody's death on, on you because right. you didn't have enough faith when every man has been dealt a measure of faith. That's now, right. the secret thing belongeth to the Lord. Why did that person die? It is appointed unto every man That's a good. certain time. We do not see all things and know all things, but to blame it on somebody's faith right. alone is crazy. That reminds me of Job's friends. It's like yes. they're going in there that's and good. they're telling Job, what did you do wrong? And you must have done something wrong. It's like that kind of friend that's just, well, you didn't pray hard enough or you didn't yeah. have enough faith. That's it's ridiculous. Yeah. Job's friends were condemned mm -hmm. and that I don't think and, is an acceptable And I question. look at Jesus as the example. When he was in that garden of Gethsemane and he said, and this is all, actually on my father's tombstone, my mother put it on, thy will be done, mm -hmm. not mine. Mm -hmm. So if we submit ourselves to God's will, mm -hmm. God will have his way. We are not required to have a theology for something that we do not understand. Mm -hmm. It is once appointed to man to die, but there is such a thing as premature death. Mm -hmm. um, you, two seeds cannot, you, the seed makes a demand on the soil, so you can't plant two seeds in the same soil. Faith is a seed and doubt is a seed. And so sometimes there are things that we just don't understand as you spoke about the mysteries. There are also those very difficult times when things like that happen. Don't rob yourself of the process. Grieve, cry, 
Be angry and sin not. Let God know you didn't like it. Ask God to give you an understanding about it. Don't buy into the mask. Don't buy into the masquerade. Oh, how's everything? Oh, just wonderfully, I'm wonderfully saved and God is good. Yes, God is good and God is still God, but I am hurting, I am in pain, I am disappointed. I stood on the word of God. I prayed, I fasted, and this person still, what happened, God? You know, and, and I've watched churches lose their stance. I've watched people lose their stance. And this is something that we do have to take serious and soberly and count the cost. And I think we need to quit manufacturing answers for things that we don't have the answer to. Wow. Cast wow. blame. That's good. Yeah. We like to right. cast blame. Everything yeah. that happens negative, we want to cast blame on someone. Right. But to say you didn't have enough faith, is just crazy. I mean, you have to already deal with the person who lost someone they love. There is, though, a peace and a comfort that comes by the Holy Spirit when you are going through that process, although you do grieve terribly. And, but the, they, they say that the real grieving starts six months after the death is when they, because you're, you're in this sort of numb state and really God's comfort. So I believe that hurting people, God rushes in and comforts, but you have to have somebody to talk to, somebody to pray with, somebody to open up and say, I hate this, I, this sucks. And we're called yeah. to rejoice with those who rejoice and, and mourn, mourn with yes. those who and mourn, mourn, not yeah. say, you didn't have enough faith. No, right. Right. Yeah. it's crazy. And, and for those, the person that wrote that email to us, I hope that we've given you some comfort. I hope, like Amy said, Jesus rushed in mm -hmm. and held mm -hmm. you in his hand. Mm -hmm. There is a number on the bottom of your screen, 888 665 Four four eight three. There's someone on the other end of that phone mm -hmm. that can help you. We hope that you continue to send us your feedback. We love your emails and we love you. We'll be right back. Welcome back, welcome back to Sister to Sister. You sent the questions, our audience asks, we answer. We're gonna get right to it because we have a gentleman in the audience today who's gonna read your question, Mike. I have a restaurant business and recently applied for a liquor license. Now all my Christian friends are questioning my walk with the Lord. Is there anything wrong with this? Oh. Yes. <laughs> Go ahead, Roxanne, our oh, attorney. Immature question for yes. the for the person that's questioning it. You know, uh, Jesus produced wine for a wedding. Let's face First it. First miracle. 
Yes, and That's also, what do you say to the attorney that represents divorce clients? What do you say to the attorney that represents criminals? Now, Chick-fil-A, they had a conviction not right. to open on Sundays. We go on our convictions when the Word of God doesn't give a definite command on the subject. And the, the, this person may be reaching out to a lost world. Right. Now, over-serving drinks is breaking the law and violating it. But I say if God called you to it, go for it. Because there are questions in other professions that do similar things that God says this is the season for you. Well, maybe, think if, it's wrong? maybe if their liquor license was for like a strip club, <laughs> yeah. then maybe yeah. there'd be an issue. But... I mean, I'm saying a restaurant? Yeah. My gosh. Well, I, res I respect judgmental. the person who wrote the question in. Oh, of course. I'm thinking that their friends going to their church saying, oh, you can't do that. That's mm -hmm. who I think oh, yes, are, right. are, okay. are immature. Mm -hmm. That's what and, she was saying. Right. right. But I wanted to clarify, it's not the person who sent the, no. That person is sincerely yeah. seeking mm -hmm. our advice. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. What do you yeah. have? Well, I mean, I grew up with friends that owned restaurants. They, they rented from my dad's building, and so they had liquor and that issue came up a lot because they are mm. Christians and they just said it, it's just a ridiculous question to say because my business it, we have food too but that doesn't mean we're in charge of everybody's gluttony right. you know it's, so right. it, it doesn't make more. sense but what if somebody was hurting and they went and sat down at that bar yeah. and what if that Christian owner could go over what's up man what's going on you know can I help you with anything today I mean what if we used it for good yeah. And it's a place to help people. Well, I like that. I hope, you, I hope you got the answer that you wanted to hear. And we have another question, and that's Lori. I can see that my job is not allowing me to take care of my family as I would like to. Should I quit? <gasps> oh, boy. These are great <laughs> questions. Now, Corey, you have a family, and you're back working part-time. Yes. Uh, you know what? I, it depends on... There's so many other questions I want to ask, like, what, yes, what right. the situation is. But, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, we're called, especially the husband is called to take care of their family and have that security. My husband at one point in our lives was working crazy amounts of overtime. There wasn't time for family time. And you know what? I respected that because he was taking care of us in the way we needed it at the time. Mm -hmm. Can that go on forever? No, but the Lord blessed that mm -hmm. and he put him in a position where he doesn't have to work like that anymore. So it, it's a tough question. I don't know if we're talking <laughs> about working mothers or what we're no, talking I about. I have so many yeah. questions I, I about that question. I that scripture, a person's gift makes room for them. And that doesn't just mean in the church. That's right. Your gifting, your mm -hmm. calling may be in the world. Mm -hmm. And so that if God called you to a certain aspect in your life, a profession, he will make room for that. Now, in my personal situation, I felt there were seasons in my life where I had to leave a job, a nice job, a nice firm, uh, in order to begin to raise my family. And then God brought the back that I began to pick up clients. So we have to allow the Lord to take us through those seasons and decide, is this the time my gift gets strengthened? Mm -hmm. Is this the time my right. gift takes the backseat to my gift as a parent? And it and could be taking care of a parent too. That's the thing. Yes, you that's could right. be thinking this is only about working mothers. That's good. But I stopped working for eight months to mm -hmm. care for my mother-in-law, mm -hmm. Baba. The bingo player, <laughs> and she, I, will, I, will, the, I don't regret one yeah. second of it. I think you have to work it out with you and your husband. Like, what does our family need me to do? Do I need to do that extra work to bring in extra income, or do is it more beneficial for me to stay at home? Uh, what what's going to work best for our family? And there's different seasons. Mm -hmm. So, like my season now, all three kids are in school. <laughs> I'm very upset about it. <laughs> we can tell. I, I, do wanna, I just want to throw this in there, though. I think it is so honorable to be a stay-at-home mom. Me and too. I feel mm -hmm. yeah. so, right. I so blessed mm -hmm. that the Lord allowed that in our lives. Right. And, yes, there, you know, right now I'm, I'm back to work for a, a temporary amount of time. But I just feel so blessed that the Lord gave that gift yeah. to us. Amen. That's good. So yep. many gifts that God gives to us so freely. Mm -hmm. But here's a question from Renee. Is it okay to divorce? See, it, it gets quiet up here yes, it does. on yes. these tough these questions. Are heavy questions. Thank yeah, you for sending really that in. Yeah. I say Malachi 2.16, God hates divorce, but God does not hate divorced people. 
That's and right. I think that's, mm, that's an good. important difference to make. That verse does not say God hates someone that's divorced. Mm -hmm. God hates divorce. Mm -hmm. It's not what he wants. It's not his plan. But if you're divorced, God loves you. Nice. It that's says good. in the Old Testament that divorce is okay when someone's heart grows cold. Now, that's one side. On the other side, if you're trying to win somebody's, you know, get back in good connection with your husband, there's that, there's that winning him with love. But love never fails. Amen. So, but some people live unloved and uncared for, and it makes me so sad right. for them because they shouldn't have to live like that. Well, They're please. God's daughter, and they deserve to be loved and cared for and valued and adored. Mm -hmm. and see, you must hear this, Amy. You know, All the you're time. coming, your heart, you're pouring your heart because you must hear from hurting women. Yeah. Would you want your daughter in an, in an unloved relationship like that she had to lock down to for the rest of her life? No, but I would want, mm -hmm. I believe sincerely in reconciliation. Yeah, I absolutely. believe in repentance yes. and reconciliation. Yeah. So until all avenues have been exhausted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it says in the New Testament, a divorce is like a dismembering of a body. Right. It's, dis it's, it's gross and it's horrific. And then you've got a lot of aftermath. that affects your life deeply. And I think they need to talk to people that have stuck it out mm -hmm. and talk to mm -hmm. people that have been divorced. I just spoke with a woman at my church last night who prayed 25 years for her husband and he is saved now. Another friend of mine, the similar thing. Other friend that couldn't take the adultery or the abuse. Mm -hmm. So I think they need to get wise counsel right. on both ends. And right. what about me as an attorney? Yeah. I yeah. struggled yeah. with handling divorces, mm -hmm. and I didn't want to condemn people. Well, was there adultery? Was there mm -hmm. abuse? So I finally eased my way out of it because mm -hmm. God was bringing me mm -hmm. to a level of conviction to say, mm -hmm. I didn't take you through law school to do that. It might be wow. lucrative, wow. but this is the season, Roxanne. You've got to trust me and walk mm -hmm. away from it. Wow. So even in the situation of maybe not divorcing mm -hmm. personally, but how do you handle it mm -hmm. when that's part of your profession? Mm -hmm. And that, that also so can you, be wrenching. So you don't do I don't divorce. do them now, no. but I don't condemn the person for doing right. it either. And so I don't want to sit there and be that level of condemnation, condemnation on somebody who needs to get that divorce. Right. And I refer right. them out. What do you have for me, the wisdom of flow? Well, I just, I really think that the, not I think, but I know the word of God is, that's not God's perfect will. Right. And, and he, as she bought out, um, it has to do with the hardening of the heart. That's right. And so if we can position ourselves for God to break up the fallow ground, mm -hmm. sometimes what you find growing out of that broken ground that's been broken up by the Holy Spirit, watered by the word of right. God, sometimes mm -hmm. there's a whole new thing that will spring up and grow in you and right. you maybe can find love and forgiveness for mm -hmm. whatever it is right. remember there's two different people coming together from mm -hmm. two different backgrounds you never know what's in that other person's background and how it has affected them mm -hmm. and so it and, and you know divorce is not easy I also really um, love what Corey bought out because we do have a tendency to condemn mm -hmm. right. the divorce mm -hmm. and that's not what we want right. to do. No, no, and I hope that that answered the question for and our God viewer. Does miracles. God like, does miracles. A miracle yes, can happen right. in that marriage and in right. that relationship. That's what we want to how believe about, for. How first. about people that get married? They get divorced and then they get remarried again. Oh, yeah. I, I just think that's <laughs> the most romantic thing ever. Okay, but we have one more question, and I'll just give it it's to you, romance. girls. Go ahead, Here it girls. is. What do I do when I think? that God has given me a desire in my heart, but I can't seem to carry it out. Mm -hmm. What desire is it though? Mm -hmm. If it's an well, ungodly sure. desire, for example, if you are single and you are looking to go and fornicate. <laughs> um, <Hello. laughs> the Bible Hello. was written aforetime for our learning and <laughs> that is our manual. And so when you have a manual, if something's wrong, you take it, you, you pull out that manual, correct? Mm -hmm. So if your desire is an un uh, it's a godly desire, but it is out of the season for it to be met. It's not being met under the right conditions. Then you need to take a look at that and make sure that your life is lining up with the word of God. Is that easy? I'm not going to put on a pretense here and say that it is. No, yes, wanted. you have urges. <laughs> you have, and these are things that we deal with. No, That's really, right. these are things we deal with. And we tend to, oh, just praise that the Lord will be your husband. The Lord, listen, you're laying next to a pair of thighs and chest and biceps. And, you know, I'm sitting here in heat and I'm tired of taking cold showers. Can I get some? 
something else, you know? So <laughs> I need a little something more than we that, okay? So, <laughs> so I, I just we think that as believers, yes, you know, but do we need help? You better believe we do. And anybody that sits up there and tells you something different, they're lying to you or they are in denial. Oh, and wow. both need deliverance. Well, okay, good. well, I wasn't thinking about that kind I know. of a desire. I know. I know. I know. I know. Like a new car. I just want to like a new even car. That, you want to, you want to, again, does or it ministry. line up? Or you, or you got to be a good I steward. I think you have to look at it too. That I think you're halfway there when you say I have God-given desire, but I can't get there. You're right. We can't do it on That's our own. Right. We need yeah. God to get us we there. We can't do it on our own. And whoever gave us that question, we love that too. <laughs> wow, wow. We you are sister me, to sister, mm -hmm. and we're here every week with exciting conversation, just <laughs> like this. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for watching. That was a great show. Lots of interesting questions. I love the scripture in Psalms 119. Help me understand that I can follow your teachings. I will guard them with all of my heart. The word says that if we need wisdom, that we should just ask of him and he'll give it to us liberally. He can answer all of our questions, That's Kathy. That's right. Or, or Flo could answer yeah. all of our questions if you ask me. Around sister to sister, we have a verse that goes like this. As iron sharpens iron, so does the countenance of one man or sister sharpen the other. Makes me a better Kathy. See you next time.